There are times I think about this. The Dark Knight and Spider-Man 2. Those two, to me, are the greatest superhero movies of all time. Some days Dark Knight, some days Spider-Man 2, but in all true honesty, Spider-Man 2 wins most of those days. Spider-Man 2 stars Tobey Maguire, Kristen Dunst, Alfred Molini, and James Franco and is about Peter Parker is beset with troubles in his failing personal life as he battles a brilliant scientist named Dr. Otto Octavius. This movie came out in the summer of 2004 and I do remember being very young and very excited for this movie. I remember the days where you go to movie theaters and you see trailers and posters on the wall and you don't see them on the internet before. This is before social media became release of any information of trailers trailers, posters, or anything. You go to the movie theaters, you see the trailers on the screen, or you see a poster on the wall. And I remember seeing the poster on the wall for Spider-Man 2, and I was just beyond excited. Because like I said with my first review of Spider-Man, I love Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. That original movie is so important to me. And even as a kid, after watching this movie, I have always said that this one is way better than the first one. Beginning with my positives is the story itself. I think this is the definition of a sequel. You take everything they love about the first one, put it in this one, develop the characters even more, and then make the action scenes bigger and better. That's what this movie does for a sequel for a blockbuster. Definition of what sequels need to do. And for this movie, they say, hey, Peter Parker, your life's gonna suck right now. Lives in a very tiny apartment. He's basically get fired. Opening scene of this movie gets fired from his pizza job. He cannot pay his rent. Rent. And he also is losing the love of his life to an astronaut dickhead. And this movie just treats Peter Parker like, hey, you might be Spider-Man. You might be a hero to this people. But you're just a kid who can't get his grades up and he can't figure out his love life. And the movie beats on him the entire movie. And it does that very well because you still like Peter. He's still a good guy. He still does Spider-Man things. But all this stress is building up to a point where he's losing his powers. He's losing the interest of being Spider-Man. That is a great development of his character and what this movie's going through. And then introducing Alfred Molini as Doc Ock, a character when you first meet him, he's kind of a dickhead. When you first meet him, he's kind of a dickhead. And then you learn he does love his wife. He wants to create something with these arms. He wants to be a really cool scientist, basically. But then things go wrong and it leads to him becoming Doc Ock. And I have to say, Alfred Molini as Doc Ock is just fantastic. He's evil. He is an evil villain. And you know what? The movie does well enough to give him development. They're like, I feel bad that your wife got stabbed in the eye by glass. But hey, you're an evil dude, so like, you can't be evil. And every time these two Spider-Man and him fight, these action sequences are amazing. I think the fight scenes in these movies are great. We'll get to number three in a few days. I will say, Spider-Man 3 has some good action scenes, this one though, I mean, come on, the action scenes are top notch. Like every action scene is literally top notch. The famous one, of course, is the train sequence. It's an amazing sequence. You start from a building, you go all the way down onto the train, and this train sequence is awesome. The fighting, the punching of Doc Ock versus Spider-Man, it's awesome. And you have Danny Elfman's score blaring in the background. It is an amazing sequence with great editing, intense moments, big moments, and it's just a really good, solid action scene, and it ends greatly by showing Spider-Man save these people with a very, very awesome, intense scene of him pulling this train to a slow distance before it falls off a cliff, and he does it, and these people protect his identity. I love the train sequence. It is the sequence in the movie that is so memorable to action sequences of Spider-Man. But hold up now, there is one sequence we do need to talk about, the hospital scene. I, I rely on this scene a lot because whenever people say to me, Spider-Man Homecoming is the best Spider-Man movie, that's your opinion, I'm glad. No other Spider-Man movie, no other superhero movie will ever go to the limit 
that this movie did. The hospital scene in Spider-Man 2 is an Evil Dead spinoff, if you ask me. Sam Raimi came to the scene and said, okay, this is my scene, this is my Evil Dead moment, here we go. Doc Ock, who was unconscious, his arms awakened during surgery, and murder the doctors and the nurses in pretty much a horror scene straight up. The woman on the ground pulling away with her nails on the ground clawing, her screaming for her life, pulling a man up to the light, electrocuting him, and don't even get me started on the part where the straight up an Evil Dead ripoff is basically you are the Doc Ock arm and the camera goes straight up to this man who is holding a chainsaw trying to chop off this arm and you know what the arm does? It pushes the chainsaw into his face, killing him. Now, you don't see the chainsaw go into his face because it's still Spider-Man. But still, that scene is in a superhero movie where kids are in love with it. And I'll never forget this. This is a great story. As a kid, going to see in theaters, I do remember seeing this in theaters. I loved it. I don't know why. It's because I'm a, I love horror that much. Even as a kid, I was just like, oh my gosh, these are scary monsters. My sister burst into tears and my mom had to go and let her into the hallway for a minute to calm her down and I sat there with my dad and watched Spider-Man 2 enjoying that scene but that was a great little story to tell you because Spider-Man 2 has a great influence of horror on me too. Now like I said this movie does a great job developing these characters. Mary Jane is dealing with how much she does love Peter Parker. She's also in love with Spider-Man. By the end of this movie she finally gets to see Peter as Spider-Man. She finally knows his secret and it's a great moment in how she goes to her wedding and she says screw this dude I'm gonna go marry or hang out with Spider-Man aka my love of my life Peter Parker and it's a great ending scene of them two together in his little small apartment. I love that scene. It's a great development for this entire movie, how he's losing his powers, he's stressed. When he loses his powers, he does learn that, hey, I can live my life, but I do need to be Spider-Man. The responsibility after Mary, J Mary Jane is going through all this turmoil and everything, and him going through this turmoil of being Spider-Man and being Peter to come together at the very end, it's a great development of the story. And I didn't even talk about James Franco in this movie. He still hates Spider-Man. He doesn't trust Peter because of he's friends with Spider-Man, even though he doesn't know that he's Spider-Man. But when he finds out, huge moment. And I love at the very end of this movie, he finally finds his dad's office and he finds all of his tools and they set up New Goblin into Spider-Man 3, which, um, yeah, we'll talk about in a couple days. But either way... Spider-Man 2 develops characters, amazing action sequences, an amazing well-directed film by Sam Raimi. I honestly don't have any issue with this movie. This is a perfect superhero movie. I will give Spider-Man 2 an A+. And like I said, even as a kid, I liked Spider-Man 2 more than Spider-Man, but I loved both these movies so much. And I was so stoked for Spider-Man 3 as a kid. But we'll talk about that in a couple of days. And anyway, you guys, guys enjoyed this movie review, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, everyone.